Uh, our next speaker to keep things uh, moving is uh, Chris Anthony. Uh, he's a co-founder of Camber and he's the managing director overseeing the advisory group at Camber. He brings more than 15 years of airline experience to his role there. He has worked directly or consulted on behalf of dozens of carriers from around the world, uh, has worked on just about every continent, and uh, his background includes time as a practitioner of pricing and revenue management, ancillaries optimization, promotion planning, distribution channel management, network development, offer strategy, and loyalty program design. He is not just a practitioner, he's also a seasoned consultant and a savvy technologist. He's worked on both the development of software systems as well as the organizational process optimization to apply those tools. Uh, so he comes with a very rich background uh, and he's no stranger to value creation uh, using those tools and processes. So uh, Chris, I'll hand you the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. Um, I will leave it up to everyone's interpretation whether that uh, uh, wonderful introduction had something to do with the fact that you work on my team, but um, that, that everyone can think about that or not. So thanks everyone for your time. I'm very excited to be talking to you today about a topic which we in Canberra call holistic uh, commercial thinking. Um, and this is something that probably some of you have even heard of from before. I know there have been rumblings around the industry uh, over the past few years of bringing things closer together, whether that be revenue management, marketing, et cetera. But it seems like we kind of get fits and starts and we don't make a lot of progress. And perhaps one of the reasons for that has been situations like the risks seem to outweigh the rewards. Uh, legacy systems and processes that are in the way, those are complex to change. And it makes it difficult then to confront what might be a major opportunity because of all of those things that need to be adjusted that take a lot of time, effort, people, resources, cost. Um, but then we look at the situation that we're currently in. And if everyone would just indulge me a minute and take a journey down the down memory lane to say more than a year ago um, let's think about what we considered in that environment to be volatility or variability in data from a revenue management perspective we were concerned by things like seasonality trends um, what happens on a, a day of week basis time of day basis um, special events we we're all concerned if we missed ah, i didn't realize that there was a lady gaga concert in barcelona for example um, skirmishes on the on the competitor side that sometimes would boil over into fair wars. Well, I think all of us would love to go back to that environment. We have a nostalgia for 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 that past, that comfortable world of what we knew and were familiar with in terms of volatility. Today's world, though, is radically different. Look what's shifted. Um, sudden government mandates, for example, things change at the drop of a hat. Uh, travel restrictions today might not be the same as they are tomorrow. Um, we look at what consumer has happened in terms of demand. Willingness to pay doesn't matter when willingness to fly is an issue. Uh, the competitive landscape in terms of what's being scheduled filed, you know, uh, Jeremy mentioned before how we used to have this comfortable cycle of uh, file the schedule outwards. Well, now that's been all completely upended in terms of people being, um, you'll see a schedule out there and then it's completely different the, the next day or it gets changed last minute. So if I pause there for a moment and say, let's step away from the commercial and look at what already exists in the airline industry from an operational perspective, we could make the argument that airlines and we people who work in airlines actually have done a very good job in taking a holistic approach to the operational side of the business. The OCC really does function as like a central nervous system. You have all of the read information that comes in, whether that's weather, what's happening with crew, what's happening with maintenance, and that's all done in a streaming real-time basis so that then people can make quick decisions about the best way to react to challenges in the marketplace. Do I need to do an equipment swap? Do I need to do a gate swap? But, that's, but then you think about what could happen in the environment where would you ever want to always do a gate swap to solve for any situation? Of course not. Similarly, a promotion is not the solution for every single situation where you have a demand problem. In order to take a better approach for what we need to do in terms to solve of the commercial lens, we probably need to look at it in a similar way to what is the full picture in the way that you do from the operational standpoint. 
At the same time, operations has been in this very fast paced cycle of I have to read the information, make changes, react to it very, very quickly, where for better or worse, I think in commercial, we've long kind of accepted this attitude that we had more time. Maybe we didn't in reality, but the perception was is that our decision making cycle was longer. But now, if we look at how the pandemic has changed things, I think we can all come to terms with the reality that that cycle has dramatically shrunk. Um, booking curves, you know, uh, there was just Emiliano and Rodrigo were just talking about how much that's shifted to being closer in. I've spoken to a number of airlines. One director of revenue management told me just two days ago that it's not even a curve anymore. It's a hockey stick. So in that environment, everything that we used to know, the time that we had to react is 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 so much different, it's radically shifted. Um, we already talked about how competitors will file optimistic schedules. That's something Jeremy referenced and then they go all of a sudden last minute, they cancel everything or in the last two weeks. It's not the same that we used to. We have to be able to react more quickly. And then there's all of the unpredictables. We don't know if there's going to be a new quarantine in you know, Brazil tomorrow, or if there's going to be a change on policies, can people eat at restaurants in California again? All of that impacts what the decisions that a consumer makes from a travel perspective, which then impacts our demand. Whoa, we jumped a little bit ahead there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it requires us to be able to take more uh, of those, those actions based on real-time signals in the marketplace. However, how can we do that across all of commercial if we still operate in a very siloed environment? Yes, some of those barriers have been breaking down in terms of say scheduling, working a bit closer with revenue management. But I think it's quite common today in the industry that we still see a lot of divisions between things like pricing revenue management, uh, ancillaries. Where does ancillaries fit? Some airlines it's with marketing, some airlines it's with e-commerce, some it works with pricing revenue management. Sometimes it's its own standalone team. It is very hard to coordinate, communicate, and reach the best outcomes possible if all of these various functions are using different KPIs, so their measurements are for success, uh, their actions available to them are separated and not coordinated. How can we get to an optimal result? Likely, if we were then to consider all of the various pieces of information and data available to us through the single lens of maximization of demand capture and revenue opportunity, then we would be able to have a toolkit of outcomes that release those results. What would be some of the um, other benefits that come out of this process would think about avoiding duplicate uh, decision making or being able to optimize the combinations. I can think of many situations where an airline at the same time has been doing a fair sale while doing a loyalty offer, while adjusting its schedule capacity on the markets that those sales and offers are also available on. Is that an ideal outcome? Likely not. It could be, but we need to make sure that we have the right information and are making an assessment based on all of that information to create that optimal outcome. It also means the lack of silos or the breaking down of silos would put us in a position to be able to do more experimentation, learn more from each other, which hopefully would produce an environment that we are prototyping and trialing out new ideas more quickly, which is essential in an environment, like we said before, comes to a much shorter cycle of read and react. So what might, um, how might we pull all these pieces together? What's a view to this? Something like a war room mentality or a command center from the commercial perspective, if we look back to how the operational one was structured, could look something like this. In terms of the sensors or the data that is being streamed into the process into, from a real-time basis, instead of looking at you know, the weather or looking at where the crew is for a flight, we would be looking at indicators that touch on supply, demand, and probably regulations. Um, I'm most interested, I think I'm very excited about uh, the, the innovations that have happened in particular in the demand space. Traditionally, revenue management, other areas of commercial, what do we make our decisions based on? We look at bookings whether that is historical bookings or bookings on a forward flight. We now have the opportunity to go further up into the funnel and be able to make some of these decisions off of things like purchase intent. Are people clicking through from a meta perspective? Um, are they lingering in your booking flow? Uh, are they putting different combinations and searching different markets together, which shows that they're flexible, but they are definitely interested in going. 
we can take that up even higher into the into the funnel from the perspective of things like sentiment indicators. What are people talking about on the internet? You know, uh, are, are, is there a sense that going to the Caribbean right now is more safe than going to Europe? All of those things can be packaged together and taken from as real time indicators and fed into a single repository database structure, et cetera, which then is overlaid with kind of what we want to call your tactical playbook. This is no different than what someone would do in say a sports environment, whether it's like F1 racing or football or anything like that. I have a number of things that are indicating to me what's happening, who's on the pitch, what are the conditions out there, what stage are we in the match? And then I have various tactics that I can apply based on what that information or those signals are to me. We can learn a lot from that and apply that same type of approach through the commercial lens of an airline. What I also think is very important here is you don't lose the human touch. I think it is very critical that all of this can be brought together and shown as a view of recommendations or suggestions or probabilities, but we still have room for the human judgment for the individual to take their knowledge or their creativity and utilize all of that information to then arrive at what is the best, the best decision to achieve the, the maximum output. And that could be any one of the numbers of actions that we're all familiar with, whether those be sales promotions, loyalty offers, uh, cancellations, et cetera, or some combination of the above. So I'd like to give you a view of what this could actually look like. So here is just a simple mock-up, I would say, of um, call it a, a cockpit, a commercial CCO cockpit, where take on the bottom left, we do have a funnel. As I said before, normally in the past, we would only be looking at the bottom of that funnel. But as we move up it, we can get indicators that suggest, wow, people's willingness to fly, not just pay, has increased week over week or gone down. Or my direct sales are increasing or interest is increasing, even though those coming from third parties are decreasing. At the top, I could have things that indicate what is happening overall network-wise for my intent or my opportunities, and then be able to break those down into what type of opportunity it is. If you have a situation where you're dealing with, say, low awareness in a market, a pricing change might not be the optimal solution. Maybe it's to push digital advertising, for example. Any of those things can then be encapsulated through a view that's, that suggests where does the opportunities lie, which one should I pursue? What are going to have the most impact? What are going to lead to the best results? And this is something that could be then potentially overlaid through existing systems. It's not something you have to rip and replace everything, but combine it with all of the infrastructure that we already have in place on the commercial side at a lot of airlines and deep link it, connect it through to everyday activities. So I hope that kind of gives a, a, a possibility of what that future could look like. But I think there is a lot more benefit than just say recovery from the pandemic. Uh, as traumatic as COVID has been, I think it really is a catalyst for deeper, longer term change within our industry. A lot of these things were bubbling up or rumbling underneath the surface. And then COVID just exposed them to us that we have these challenges that we have been uh, not necessarily facing up to and dealing with, and now we have the opportunity, thanks to necessity, we have to do it. But even once we've done that in order to facilitate our return to revenue and profitable health, um, I would ask the question, who wants to give up on the benefits that would also come? Would anyone wanna give back the synergies or the compressed timelines that are involved in, in decision-making? Would any airline not want to be a, a league ahead of its competitors? Um, Rodrigo mentioned doing more with less. How is doing more with less ever going to go away as a benefit, even if we return to some state of normalcy? I don't think it will. So we have an opportunity today to use something like a holistic commercial approach embodied through something like the, a commercial CCO cockpit to help us down the road to recovery. But even once we return to that state of normalcy, I think many, many CCOs are going to relish this new toolkit, these, this, this new data and all this, this value that it can provide that's at their fingertips in the same way that, um, you know, investment bankers and, and football managers and political campaigns are already doing around the world. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much.